Hello. All right, so today we're going to talk about waves. <clears throat> so last time we talked about um, pendulums and springs and oscillations, and waves are a type of oscillation, but it's important to note that waves transfer energy, okay, not matter, okay? So you have a couple different types of waves, okay? So you have two types. So one is called a transverse wave. And this is um, vibrations are perpendicular, that's the symbol for perpendicular, to propagation Um, so, like how a slinky goes up and down. Um, or like light waves, they're transverse waves as well. Um, so, like a slinky would go, like if you were like holding it like a jump rope and it were, you know, like going up and down. The vibrations themselves are going up and down, but the energy is carried in one direction, okay? Um, all right, so what does a transverse wave look like and what are the parts? So you draw a little graph kind of a thing here. Um, so if you have a wave that goes up crosses the origin, goes down, comes back to the origin again, that's a wave, okay? So the top of the wave, okay, this is the crest. The distance from the top to the origin that it passes through, this is the amplitude, okay? The bottom, this is called the trough. And I have gone off the page, haven't I? I do that really a lot, sorry. Um, that's called the trough. And so um, we would say that the um, y-axis, this is your displacement versus your um, x-axis, which is time. And the distance from the beginning where it starts at the origin, goes up, goes down, and hits the origin again, this is the wavelength. So that's a wave. Now, there is an equation that you probably learned in chemistry where the velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength, the length of the wave, times the frequency, the number of times the wave passes by a given point per second. This equation is on your equation sheet. This is where V is the speed or velocity. It's in meters per second. Your lambda is wavelength which is in meters, and your frequency, your F, sorry, is frequency, which is in hertz. And a hertz, if you recall, is a cycle per second, so it's one over um, seconds. So if you multiply meters times one over seconds, you get meters per second, okay? Um, okay, so that's transverse. So let's talk about the other type of wave. And these are called longitudinal. Or compression waves. And these are when the vibrations are parallel. That's the symbol for parallel to propagation. Okay, so this would be, so an example would be if you compress a slinky and then let it go. Okay, so slinky compressed. And these are also what make up sound waves. 
okay? So if we're looking at a slinky that's compressed and stretched in different places. Um, so um, so a, a squished part that where they're closer together, this is called a compression. Where it's stretched apart, this is called a rarefaction. <clears throat> the distance from, um, from one compression to another compression, this is the wavelength. Okay, and so with these, your vibrations, like the pulse that you send through it, go in one direction, and the energy of the wave is going in the same direction. So that's what I mean by energy and vibrations are parallel, okay? Okay, now, waves can have interference. So you have different types of interferences, okay? Oh, actually, I'm gonna turn the page. I like having plenty of space to write. And I write really big. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So you have interference. So this is when you have um, waves that interact with another wave. And you get a like a new different wave okay so you have two different types of interferences so one is constructive and it adds to produce a larger wave with greater amplitude. Okay, so if you have two kind of you add those together what you end up with is a wave that's the same number, like the same wavelength, the same number of waves, but there'll be higher amplitude. Does that make sense? I guess I was trying to go back down there, wasn't I? Okay, cool. All right, so that's constructive. And so the opposite of that would be destructive. And that's when they subtract to produce a smaller wave with less amplitude. Okay, so that would be like, let's say I did this top wave again, but then I have another wave where it's going kind of exactly opposite where the troughs and the crests line up. So what you might end up getting is a wave that's similar but really small. Like, that's pretty bad, but you get the point. It's smaller, less amplitude. So these ones, the amplitudes add together to make a bigger amplitude, same number of waves. This one, they kind of subtract from each other because this crest and this trough takes away. So you end up with usually a weird looking line, honestly, that doesn't look like a wave at all. Okay, so actually that's not terrible. I'm glad that I screwed that up a little bit. All right, all right. So let's talk about standing waves. Standing waves are fun. So 
These are waves moving in opposite directions. Interfere. Constructively and destructively. So, um, so what ends up happening when you see standing waves is they appear to not be moving. As if they are standing. Okay, so you see that like when you like when you pluck a string on a guitar or a violin um, and the string kind of goes back and forth but you can't really see it moving so well. It just looks like there's kind of an oval empty space and you can hear the sound. That's kind of what a standing wave looks like. Um, this only occurs with certain frequencies. <clears throat> okay, so here's an example of what they look like. So you have an end and you'd have a hump. Maybe that goes to another end, and then a hump, then a hump, then a hump. And so everywhere where they meet, this is called a node. And everywhere where they have a hump, this is called an antinode. Okay, so for instance, this particular one, this one has, um, if you start from the beginning, right? This one has one, two, three, four places where they come together. So it has four nodes. And it has one, two, three places where it humps. So you have three antinodes. Okay? So what does this mean in terms of waves? Waves are basically um, a description of energy. So it's showing you where the energy is and where it isn't. So <clears throat> nodes are where there's minimum energy and displacement. So they're destructive. I've run out of space. Destructive. Sorry. And anti-nodes are where there's maximum energy and displacement. So that's constructive. Okay. Okay. And that brings us to strings. Strings. Okay. So, many of you play instruments, so you will have heard many of these words before, okay? But pitch, this is the highness or lowness of a sound, okay? Um, it also corresponds to frequency. So high frequencies have a high, high pitch and low frequencies have a low, low pitch. Okay? So there are factors that affect pitch. So, one would be the tension in the string. Two would be the length of the string. 
and three would be the mass of the string because all of these will affect the speed of the wave. Okay, so, um, so really high tension, like think about a really tight string like that of a violin. Those usually have very high frequency or high pitched sounds. <coughs> Whereas strings that are looser will have lower pitch sounds. The length of the string, so think about a violin, has short strings compared to a bass, which has very long strings. And which one has a higher pitch? That would be the violin. The bass is longer, so it has a very low frequency. Um, and then mass of the string, that's just something a little different, like thicker strings, bigger strings typically. Um, well, I'm going to show you the formula actually before I keep on talking because it will make more sense when you see the formula because it kind of goes inverse to the speed. So that's kind of fun. Um, okay, so. <coughs> yeah, okay. So actually, let me just talk about what I just did. So if we have um, larger lengths of strings, you're going to have a lower pitch because you'll have a lower frequency. Long, so longer strings, lower pitch because you have a lower frequency. And so remember I said that you think bass when you think that. Um, if you have a higher tension, then you have a higher pitch. Okay, so really tight strings will have a higher pitch because they have higher frequency. <coughs> and if you have higher mass, that will give you a lower pitch because you will have a lower frequency. And again, that kind of goes with bass. So think about higher, like a, a longer string, a heavier string, you're gonna have, um, that's like a bass. High, uh, high tension strings, those are going to be like a violin. Okay, so, all right. So then let's talk about there's a formula for strings that you need to know. And it is as well, it's on your formula sheet, thankfully. We love our formula sheet, it gives us all kinds of good information. Um, <clears throat> so, let's see. So it's not. Yeah, so the velocity equals the square root of ft over m over l. <clears throat> but I don't like putting a fraction in the bottom of a fraction. It's very annoying, right? Um, but they do this because m versus l is the uh, linear density of the string. So they, they do that because it gives you a different factor to look at, but we're not really caring about that factor. So you can think of it as velocity equals the square root of FTL over M. And this is a better way to think of it, okay? Where again, V is speed, and that's in meters per second. FT is tension and that's in newtons. Um, L is length, and that's in meters. And M is mass, and that's in kilograms. Which is weird, because you're like, it's a string. Strings aren't kilograms, but we have to put them in kilograms, otherwise we can't use newtons, because newtons is, what, a kilogram meter per second squared? So, yeah, so we have to use those. Okay. <coughs> All right, so where is this on your formula sheet? So I wanna point out real quick, on the back of your formula sheet, there's your string equation right here. So it says V equals what I just said where you have the linear density on the bottom, and this is a better way to think of it. Okay, so it is on there, okay? All right, so let's keep going. There's still a little bit more to do with strings. Okay. All right, so let's talk about E. 
talk about frequencies <clears throat> of strings. So, frequencies. So, first thing is called the fundamental frequency. So the fundamental frequency, this is the lowest possible frequency of a standing wave, okay? So this is where you have one hump, two nodes, okay? Where the wavelength over two, this will give you the frequency. So F, or sorry, um, N. So the first, this is called the first harmonic. And this is where N equals one. And N is the number of antinodes. <clears throat> well, N is the harmonic number, but in terms of strings, it is the number of antinodes. Okay. Um, okay. So harmonic, what does that mean? So second, let's talk about what a harmonic is. So harmonics, these are multiples of the fundamental frequency. Okay, and again, the N this is called the harmonic number. And for your purposes, for strings, only for strings, this is the number of antinodes. Okay, it's different for different devices, but for strings, it's the number of antinodes. Okay? All right, I'm run out of room, so I'm gonna go to the next. Let's do a couple of examples of what that means. Okay, so, <clears throat> oops, there we go, okay. So let's say I have, let's see. Okay, so for this one, from post to post, this is one wavelength long because it goes up and down and back. That's one wavelength, okay? So N here, you have two antinodes, so N equals two, okay? So let's say, so the harmonic number is two. It has two harmonics. All right, so let's say I go a little further and I've got one, two, three before you see another post. One, two, three. So for this one, you have one, two, three antinodes, so the harmonic number is three, okay? And so in terms of the wavelength, it would be, it goes up and down and back one more, like another half. So it's like one and a half of the wavelength. So we say it's three lambda, that's not a lambda, three lambda, oh my gosh. This is why I have white out, but I'm writing on yellow paper, so that's a thing. Okay, so three lambda over two, because it's like one and a half wavelengths, whatever the wavelength is, okay? All right, so that's kind of an example of what the harmonics look like and what the node is and how they relate, okay? <clears throat> All right, and then you have, um, overtones. And I don't want you to get too excited about overtones, but um, so this is um, harmonics on top of fundamental frequency. This is what gives instruments their unique sound. Okay. 
um, that unique sound we like to call timber. Okay, so the timber of a stringed instrument is determined by its overtone. So for strings, the overtone number is equal to n minus 1. So it's the number of harmonics on top of the fundamental. So you subtract the fundamental from it and you figure out the rest. Okay. <clears throat> so let's say we had, here's a post straight. Let's say we had uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. So in terms of your um, harmonic number, you have one, two, three, four um, humps, so antinodes. So your n equals four. So this is my third overtone. So, and you notice it's going like up and then down and then up and then down. So this is like, two wavelengths, so we'd call it two lambda. Okay, I really can't write lambdas today. Oh, my stars. What is wrong with me? I was doing better yesterday. So sorry. Ah, all right, there, two lambda, because it's like two wavelengths from post to post, okay? All right, so let's kind of go back and look, right? For the, oops, I guess you can still see everything, huh? So. For this one, right, <clears throat> we have n equals 3, which overtone is this? This is the second overtone. And for this one, n equals 2, this is the first overtone. So what do you think it is for n equals 1? There's no overtone. It's just the fundamental frequency, okay? <clears throat> All right. Now, there's a little math that goes with this. So each harmonic adds half a wave. Okay, so that's what I was talking about with like this is one wavelength, this is one and a half wavelengths, this is two wavelengths. That's what I was talking about there. Each harmonic adds a half of a wave. So we have a formula for that. So for strings, F N equals N V over two L. And this is also on your formula sheet where frequency equals, or little f, sorry, squiggle f is your frequency, which is in Hertz. V is again your speed speed of the string wave, right, which is meters per second. And L, this is the length of the string, which is in meters. And N, this is the, again, the harmonic number. So that is the number of antinodes for strings only, just for strings, okay? All right, <clears throat> so. Let's do one example. I'm gonna do another page. Okie dokie. So, for example. Now, oh, I wanted to show you also real quick. Okay, so, a couple things. So again, there is your, um, oops, so sorry. All right, there is your formula for speed of the wave, which is relying on tension, mass, and length. And here is the string, don't worry about what this open thing is but string, here's the frequency for that one. Also wanted to tell you, if you have multiple frequencies, okay, and you know the harmonic number, if you know the fundamental frequency, you can find the frequency for any harmonic, okay? Because F1 is the fundamental frequency. So if you wanted to know what it is for the eighth harmonic, it would just be eight times the fundamental, and that would give you the frequency at that particular harmonic, okay? so. You kind of have an extra little equation here that's kind of basic, but it's helpful. Okay. All right. So here's my example. So <clears throat> a guitar string vibrates with a fundamental. 
frequency of 215 Hertz it is 74 centimeters long and 5.1 grams I want to know a the speed of the wave B the tension in the string and C the frequency of the fourth overtone. Okay, so let's start with A. So the speed of the wave. So I already know from my formula sheet, right, that um, Fn equals Nv over 2L. So if I'm looking for speed, and I know the frequency, the harmonic number, and the length, and I just want V, I can rearrange this, right? So I can multiply both sides by 2L, and divide both sides by N, the harmonic number. So now I have an equation just for velocity. So 2 times the length, but the length is in centimeters. I need that to be in meters. So there's 100 centimeters in a meter. So this is 0.74 meters times the frequency, and it says it's the fundamental frequency. So I know that n equals 1 if it says fundamental. So my fundamental frequency is 215 hertz, and my n is 1. So then I just stick that in my calculator. So 2 times 0.74 times 215. And you get 318.2 uh, meters per second. Okay, so I got the velocity of my string. Next, I want the tension in the string. Okay, so that's going to be the first equation that we went over, right? Where velocity equals square root ft times l over m. Well, first I'm going to square this other side to get rid of my square root. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by m and divide both sides by l. And that will give me my just my tension. So now I have an equation just for my tension force. So mass, and it's in grams. It needs to be in kilograms. So there's a thousand grams in a kilogram, so this is 0 0.0051 kilograms, okay, times the velocity that we just found, 318.2 squared over the length, but the length needs to be in meters, and so that again is 0 0.74 meters. Okay, let me plug it in. So 0 0.0051 times 318.2 squared over 0.74. And I get 697.8 newtons. So that's my tension force in that particular string. Okay? And then part C, I want to know the frequency of the fourth overtone. Okay. And so if you remember, my um, my overtone is equal to n minus 1, okay? So if it's the fourth overtone, okay? So I want 4, right, which equals n minus 1, which means the harmonic number that I'm looking for is 5, okay? So this is where that Fn equation comes from. So Fn is equal to n times the fundamental frequency. Well, this time n is 5. So it's 5 times the fundamental, which in our equation, or sorry, in our verbiage of our question was 215. 
because that said, remember, it was the fundamental frequency is 215, right? So 5 times 215. So 1,075, and because it's frequency, it's in hertz. Okay? All right, so that, I think, utilizes every equation and our terminology. Okay? All right, so you do have a bit of homework tonight. Um, you have page 35, number 3 through 11. Okay, so I'll see you later. Good luck. Bye-bye.